Hi everybody, welcome to Vlogmas number eight. So we are moving right along. Only got four days left after this, and then I'm going to be sad because I'm going to going to be missing chatting with you every night. But I will go back to doing my vlog. So anyway, I'm going to do things a little different today. So anyway, I already made the coffee from my coffee of the day. I'm having a sip right now. Mm, this is so good, and I wasn't really sure if I was going to like it. So, but um, because I've already opened it but um it's probably not going to show up because i got that but it's spiced eggnog and it's just like drinking warm eggnog the coffee is very very faint so you really get that eggnog flavor and yeah it is good i'm loving it warm eggnog who would have thought right but anyway um you know, I know you've probably heard me talk about the inspiration tree that I do. So, actually, I put up my inspiration tree last night because uh, last night was the 19th, which was Rick's birthday. And so I've been doing this um, every year on his birthday. I put it up. And the inspiration tree started, I'm going to say, eight years ago. Um, it was before he lost his legs, but it was kind of like the last operation. It was He was in for his birthday, uh, which was December 19th. And... Um, they had moved his aorta again for the fourth time, and they said they they couldn't do it anymore. That they had, um, you know, did it on the bottom of the, coming out of the heart the first three times, and then this last time they came up like around the clavicle bone and over and then down. So and they and it was it was long. Oh my God. Um, I mean, I got pictures of the bruises still on my my phone because it was it was amazing how bruised he got from that operation. But um, you know, so we we knew that was pretty much the last operation he was going to have that they would still do the scar tissue operation every couple of months to scrape off the scar tissue. Um, they would try to clean out any clots, but there was no more, um, probably would not be able to do any more bypasses because he had had so many. Um, he, his own body was stripped of whatever veins they could use. Um, the artificial ones, his body kept rejecting, and then they moved on to the cadaver veins and his body was still um, having trouble um, accepting the cadaver veins so we knew it was getting it was getting there and um, you know when he was okay with that the thing that bothered him the most was that he wasn't going to be able to ride anymore and um, you know I and that's just seemed to be what really kept him going was um, his bike and just wanting to go riding so um, while he was sleeping and I went home to let the puppies out. I went to Walmart. I bought like this little tree. It was a different tree because that one died. But I got a little tree and I got a whole bunch of his motorcycles, uh, his uh, little models and things that he had collected over the years. And so when he woke up, I had his inspiration tree all set up by his bed. And I was like, you're going to ride again. We're going to get through this. You're going to get through this. You are a strong, amazing man. This is just a little bump in the road. And you'll be fine and you know and so I think that kind of helps so that just kind of became a thing every year to do, to do the inspiration tree which um, you know I always did around Christmas but it wasn't deliberately on his birthday and so now it's uh, it's a third year that I'm doing it on his birthday it's a memorial for him and it's um, a reminder for me of how blessed I am and just a tribute to him um, he just, was just an amazing, strong man. I don't know anybody that had, has been through through much more than he has. So, cheers, Rick. There's your tree, and I will always remember you. And so, anyway, I did that on his birthday. And then I also, uh, part of my thing on his birthday is I always watch jazz, because that was the first movie we saw together uh, when we first started dating back in 1975. But this year I added Wild Hogs to the mix, so I watched that because um, he, he didn't lose his leg that December, um, but it was like towards the end of May and he was making plans because he could feel himself clotting up again. He knew this, that this was going to be, he wasn't going to have another operation. Um, and um, so he had been talking to Donnie Smith, uh, which is a, a really incredible bike builder here in Minneapolis. And um, he took um, his Dyna over them, his uh, low rider, fat boy or whatever, to him. And they decided the best way to convert it um, to a trike was a Frankenstein kit. So he got everything ordered that he needed so that when the time came, um, 
Donnie Smith would come with his trailer, pick up the bike, and we had all the parts that he needed to do the uh, trike conversion uh, delivered right to Donnie King's place, so that Donnie Smith's place, so that he would be ready to go. But um, you know, he was still feeling good. He was out riding when I was working, as I was working at the office back then, and um, yeah, so he went to the Harley Davidson just because he liked to go and hang out with the guys there and chit chat and and buy t-shirts and you know different things uh, bike models and um, so a guy had happened to come in that needed some money quick and he had a road king I forgot what year it was but it was a it was a pretty good si nice road king with a matching sidecar that was attached and he just needed to pay off some debt and he was moving and he couldn't take it and so the Harley Davidson ship said, no, we don't have a need for a bike like that with a sidecar. We don't know anybody that even rides a sidecar. And Rick said, well, I might need one someday. So he says, how much do you want for it? And the guy wanted $7,000. So Rick's like, uh, can you wait here? I will, go, I will go get some money and I will be back. So the guy waited. Rick went and got, you know, $7,000 out of the bank, paid the guy for the bike. And then left the bike at the dealership so that they could kind of go through it, just kind of detail it, clean it up, and just make sure everything was working. So anyway, that night I came home, and of course he didn't tell me anything about that. And he says, hey, you want to watch Wild Hogs? And I'm like, yeah, sure, okay. So we're watching that, and it came to the part, and I don't know if you're familiar with that movie with like John Travolta and William Macy and Roy, Ray Le Leoder, but it's Tim Allen. It's, it's a wicked, wicked funny movie. So it gets to the part where John Travolta and um, Bill Macy are in that beat up uh, bike with the sidecar that's all rusted out and falling apart. And Rick says, oh, by the way, you know what I bought today? And I'm like, no, what did you buy? He says, I bought a bike with a sidecar. So in my mind, I'm thinking that's what it looked like. So I was pleasantly surprised when I found out what he really did buy, even though he later spent probably about another $20,000 to get it converted to the bike on his bike. He sold the Road King and then had the, um, the sidecar painted to match his uh, black, I forgot what it was, but it was the ones with the ferrons and things like that in front. So he actually had Donnie Smith working on the uh, the bike in that when he lost his uh, second leg, uh, first leg. So, and that, um, so anyway, he bought that like at the end of the May, thinking that he's got plenty of time, he knows it's coming, but he's gonna be ready, he's gonna have a choice of two bikes, so if something happens to one, he'll have the other. And it was like a couple of weeks later on my birthday is when they took um, his first leg. But not to be outdone, because yeah, he's always got to, got to be a one-upper. Two years later on his birthday, they took the second leg. So, cheers, Rick. Like I said, he's a strong man, got through it, and we always just had that inspiration tree. So, that's the story of the inspiration tree. So, let's get on to Vlogmas. And, you know, and I, I'm, you know, some people might think that's... Uh, depressing or a bad memory to have but for me it's it's not it's like it's just to me it's like every part is makes me who I am it made Rick who he is and just um our history together and uh you know it just makes me admire him and and love him even more to know everything that he went through and and to me, it's it's a it's a it's a happy memory. It's I mean, I'm always going to be sad, but my memories they keep me they keep me warm, they keep me hopeful, and they keep his memory alive. So, cheers. So anyway, I have a glass of a coffee because it's going to be wine time. All righty, so let's start. I already took out my Lindor truffles, so I got my I got this blue one, and. We got the Sensi calendar here, so we need number eight. And anyway, I hope everyone is having a fantastic weekend. I guess it's the last shopping weekend before Christmas, so I hope everybody is ready. Of course, probably a lot, a lot more online shopping, so I hope all your packages are delivered. Alrighty, so we have um, lemon verbena dish soap, and um, I have whoops. I haven't bought this before, but I have gotten samples of this in my Scentsy Whip box, and it really is nice. It cuts the grease because I, you know, even though I have a dishwasher, I sometimes it's just easier to do it by hand instead of waiting two weeks to fill it, um, unless I go crazy and want to bake something. But 
the lemon verbena. So to me, um, what I remember it was lemon, like lemon, lime, and the verbena, I think that's what kind of gave it kind of like a citronella type smell, kind of like a, not grassy, but um, a different kind of scent. So it, so it, you had the lemon and lime, like the citrus, but then you had this, uh, the verbena, which kind of toned it down a bit, but it, it was really nice. And you do get quite a bit in here to do quite a few dishes. Well, maybe if you're doing for like a family of 20, but if you're doing it for family one, it lasts quite a while. So we'll open that. And number eight. And you know, I found that if you uh, open this all the way over like this, there was a finger hole to grab the things out. Yeah, things you learn as you go along. Okay, so this is a Pinot Blanc from Canada, Aurora. It's a nice white one. And what it says, so it says the Aurora, and of course, because I printed this out from their website, so I would be ready. So it says the Aurora Pinot Blanc blend it's USA's favorite neighbor to the north has created a delightful, crisp, balanced wine with strong flavors of green apple and lemon. Made near Vancouver, Canada, this holiday jumpstart wine is the perfect introduction into cold climate Pinot Blanc. A wine specifically made for white wine lovers, this wine represents that no matter how hard life gets, you always have friends and neighbors that love you. So that is just a truly inspirational message to have on Rick's birthday. Of course, you're supposed to let it breathe for like 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so it tastes like the green apple, the apricot, pear, melon, and lemon zest. The sweetness is low, the acidity is high, tannins are low, body is light, and the alcohol is medium. For pairing guide, it says lemon, chicken, tilapia, oysters, Celine Dion music, marathons, and bunny hugs. It also tells you a little story behind the wine, but I don't know if you guys want to hear that every time, so I will leave that part out because I'm running longer than I wanted to. So anyway, let's open this. And, oh, it smells fruity. I'm gonna finish my coffee, so I don't wanna pour a lot, but anyway. Cheers, everybody. I hope that you have a great Christmas week. And um, anyway, we'll chat again tomorrow. Cheers, everyone. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.